before you sit down, we're going to start with aerobics this morning, okay? You get to sit down in just a second, so remain standing. I want you to think about how long you have lived in Big Stone Gap, okay? If you've lived in Big Stone Gap less than five years, sit down. If you've lived here less than 10 years, sit down. If you've lived here less than 15 years, sit down. If you've lived here less than 20 years, sit down. How about you've lived here less than 25? Sit down. You lived here less than 35 years. Sit down. I knew I'd eventually eliminate some of you. <laughs> You've lived here less than 45 years. Sit down. You've, how about less than 50 years, between 50 and 45? She'll never, She'll never sit down. So in other words, some of y'all have been here 50 or more years. You can sit down now. <laughs> Pardon? I didn't hear you. I'll let you decide how to do the math on that one, Alberta. <laughs> now I want, to, I want you to think about another number. How long, get this number in your head, how long did you live here before you felt like Big Stone Gap was your home? Okay, get that number in your head. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count to three, and when I get to three, I want you to shout out that number that's in your head, okay? One, two, three. One, six. Okay, lots of different numbers there. You know, home is one of those interesting kinds of concepts, especially in the Appalachian region. You know, we all pretty much understand that phrase, going home or, or going down home, we, we, we have an understanding almost built into our very uh, essence of what it means. I was wondering, there are some of you that were born here. How many of you were actually born in Big Stone Gap and have lived in Big Stone Gap your whole life? Got a few of you. Got a few back in the choir behind me. Okay. Is there anyone here that's still living in the house in which he or she grew up in? Got some hands going up for that one, okay. Well, as a United Methodist pastor, since 1983, I'll have been at it 35 years following next annual conference, it's, it's sort of hard to say where home is. You know, we joke with our boys that they have friends the length and breadth of the annual conference since I've served at both ends and in the middle too. Yet for me, going home, especially at the holidays, that's sometimes a difficult proposition. You know, for me growing up, Christmas Eve was the big time of celebration. We waited for my grandfather, to, to, who always seemed to work the 2 to 10 shift. I don't know why he couldn't work the day shift, but he was always working that 2 to 10 shift at the aluminum company on Christmas Eve. We had to wait till he got off work at 10, and he had to go back to the pot rooms and change, and then he had to walk out to where the car was, and then he had to get in and drive home. And it's pushing 11 by then, and you can imagine what a young child is doing at 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve. There with my cousins Jeff and Suzette and Brian were waiting for Pop to get home so we could begin our celebration. You know, for me, those Christmas Eve family times stopped 34 years ago when I began serving in the church and spending my Christmas Eve with you all, with parishioners, with congregants. Uh, we'd come for a quick service. You all would go back home to your families, to your festivities. Your homes were near the church. Mine oftentimes was not. I couldn't just always get back home for time to be with the family because sometimes I was in Newburn, Virginia or I was in Jasper, Tennessee, the other side of Chattanooga. I was at the extreme ends of the annual conference in Bluefield and so going home on Christmas Eve was not one of those kinds of things that happened very much anymore. And when I got married it became even harder. Now I was trying to find time with my family and Debbie's family who lived in Michigan. Talk about extremes. You can't get to Michigan on Christmas Eve. 
Many of the times on Christmas Day, we're driving when nothing is open. Can't even find a McDonald's to eat at. But we're going home. We're going back. Coming home for the holidays. You know, for, for many people, that concept invokes a time of joy and celebration. For others, maybe it's a different kind of time. Perhaps there is no happy place for some folks to come home to. Perhaps the gathering is filled with family and there is infighting and unrest instead of joy and celebration. Perhaps we let things come between us and our families that just tend to make the holidays more stressful and less joyous. Last week, the scripture lesson from Isaiah painted a picture of a God that had turned away from God's people because of their sinfulness. The people felt alone and were filled with regret. The people needed some kind of sign to reassure them that God had not abandoned them forever. They needed to come back home. Back home to where God was. Back home to a place where they could encounter God's presence and God would welcome them. Well, in the psalm this week, we see that God has indeed turned back toward God's people. He's turned his face back. He's restored the fortunes of Jacob. And in the verses that are not included in today's reading, we hear the following. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God, of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again so that we, your people, may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Well, the psalmist asserts that God has indeed been merciful, that God has offered pardon for sin, and God has spoken peace to the faithful if they would only turn their hearts to the Lord. God has returned home to his people and welcomes them back into the fold as well. With that kind of concept, we ask the question this morning, what then is home? And I'd like to suggest that maybe home is wherever we happen to meet. It's the place where our paths cross. It's the place where we come into contact with the lives of the people that live around us. According to the psalmist, it's a place where steadfast love and faithfulness meet in our passage today. It's the place where without the intervention of mistletoe, Righteousness and peace will kiss each other and they will be joined together. Home is where we meet one another. Home is anywhere we meet God. Home is the assurance that the babe in the manger became the man on the cross and died for our sins while we were yet sinners. Home. It's anywhere that God's people get together to share God's love with one another and with those in need of experiencing that love in the community around us. Home. It's right here today in this place, a place where Jesus is ready to meet you and welcome you into his presence and invite you into that eternal home that he promises. May we pray. Most gracious God, thank you for inviting us home. Help us to find our home and rest in you as we seek to experience your love and power and presence in our midst, not only this holiday season, but throughout the year as well. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.